and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. I'm Robert Llewellyn. And I'm Johnny Smith. Hello. Very good. And Johnny is joining us via Skype and I haven't got much of a voice. But Johnny, you're looking fabulous. You look marvellous. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello to you and your voice. Robert. Thank you. Yeah, you might, you might get a bit of my voice if we're lucky. We're going to do some great stories today. The first one I want, Johnny, which really caught my eye, was the, the, the taxi in, in Finland, driven by Ar- Ari Nysonen. What a great name. Yes, Ari not Nysonen. Ari Vatanen, the, uh, one of the most uh, Amazing mad rally drivers. rally drivers ever. I think this guy's probably quite a careful driver. I don't think he's necessarily skidding his Tesla through the woods at 90 miles an hour. <laughs> but, so this is a taxi that has clocked up 400,000 kilometres or 250,000 miles in yeah. a Tesla Model S. And he's, his batteries are still, was it 93% of their original yeah. capacity? That's right. It says that the um, the battery is still able to maintain roughly 93% of its uh, original uh, range. Showed very few signs of degradation. Um, one thing that interested me is said that it uh, because it's got an eight year warranty, hasn't yeah. it? The the battery and the motor set up on that car. Uh, his is an 85 kilowatt um, hour um, car. Right. Yeah, the original headline makes it go, oh my god, it's done really well. But then when you read the details, it's a bit more complicated. Yeah, it, it, don't get me wrong, it, wasn't, it hasn't been a flawless no. quarter of a million miles, but what they are saying is, yes, it has, it has had to have certain components um, refreshed or replaced, but the service was excellent. The rest of the car shows no sign of um, falling to pieces. Right. Of course, Finland's really quite a tough climate. Yeah, yeah. So, oh. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really impressed I, by it. Because I think it's amazing. Hopefully, yeah. Well, hopefully it will um, encourage people to realise that uh, just because – it is a battery car. Doesn't mean to say that you can't keep it for very long, which I think was always the yeah, early perfectly re- perfectly reasonable fear early on because we didn't know. Nobody knew, you know. It, no. It was, yeah. I'm actually thinking of keeping my electric car beyond its warranty to yeah. just see what happens yeah. for a long time. Well, I've kept my yeah. My Leaf is now well beyond its warranty <laughs> and slightly beyond. It's, it's a little bit dented. <laughs> I have to be, I've seen it. I have, yeah, I have to be careful how we photograph it so you don't see the kind of quite large dents on one side. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, done a, it's done a lot of it's miles. Parisian. It's, like it. yeah, it's been, very Parisian. It's, very, it's, 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 it's a Parisian style car. I've always seen it like that. Yeah. But yeah. The, the other bit of news I liked as well was, uh, <clears throat> you know, having grown up in Oxford, is uh, the Cowley plant in Oxford is going to be where they make the new Mini E, which is very good news. Um, this is this is this is exciting. Uh, yeah. Actually, it's it's taken too long. Yeah. I think, to come to fruition because they had a mini. Um, do they call it a min dash e? I hope. I think it was something like that. I, yeah, I drove one, but that I thought it was like five years ago. They that was launched ten years ago apparently. The, the, yeah. The experimental yeah. one, and it was a really nippy car. It was much quicker than i three or the Leaf or the Zoe. That thing really shifted. I mean, it was very very pokey experimental car but and that's the thing it, the the mini sort of chassis uh, would have been a great fun electric car yeah. platform i thought and what's weird is bmw have gone all out with the i3 and the i8 yeah. and which are really quite radical cars and very cool it seems they've sort of forgotten about the mini until now and yeah. kind of pushed it to the side yeah it's a bit of a shame but my guess and they, they've been very thin with the details haven't they on yeah this car? yeah uh, but my, my, my guess is that they're going to use i3 related. I mean, it's i3 is a similar size. So. Anyway, yeah, but, they've got to, haven't they? Um, similar components. Related, really, and whether or not they're going to use composites like they have with the i3. Oh, right, yeah. Mm. Ooh. Because uh, whether they just leave it as a steel car yeah. and be done with it, it might be significantly cheaper than the i3, you see. Yes, they, yes they've got a problem then, haven't they? Yes, with it. Yeah, that's the thing with big car companies, you, that's, which is across the board. You know, if, they, if you make a diesel car that's a real you know, good seller, and yeah. then you produce an electric one that actually is of comparable price from their point of view, you're in yeah. real trouble because anyone now can work out, oh, well, once you've bought it, the electric one's cheaper. So if yeah. so, you've got to make the electric one a bit more expensive to put people off from keep them buying the diesel one, which is, we'll, we'll get to diesel in a minute, but there's a lot of other stories. I mean, that whole picture is yeah. changing so quickly, isn't it? It's extraordinary. Yeah, because, you know, many, many have been a bit average of late. I'm yeah. just going to say that. Yeah. A bit, a bit flabby and a bit average. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this, this this mini concept, but I think what I would like, I'd like to hear from people that trialled the original electric mini. Yeah, good years. idea. Yeah. Um, there were about 600 of them worldwide in uh, US, Germany, UK, um, a couple of other European countries. Right. 
So like of those 600 people, is anyone watching um, who's involved with, with us, with Fully Charged? Could yeah. you get in touch with us? Yeah, no, that's a what really good What was it like? Call. Yeah, because I, I mean, I met people who had them here and then, and they used they used to plug them in in their three pin plugs in the, yeah. you know, yeah. on the wall. You know, well, so that's all they would have lot, been then. Yeah. That's the thing, a lot has happened in, yeah. in, in, in a decade. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, the the, the behaviour of EVs has changed a lot, but I would love to. That yeah. comes directly off the thought process of me desperately wanting to try and work out a way of buying a General Motors EV1. But that's another story. Right, that's another story. I have seen one in a museum. Have you? Yeah, seen one, I mean, not on the road, in a museum in Los Angeles. Yeah, there is one in a, co a car collection that's... And all I know is it's quite near the car park where Biggie Smalls was shot. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's true. Is that, that, well, that's that I mean, great thing when you're with Los Angelinos and you go to a cafe and they go, oh, this is where Janis Joplin died or this is where River Phoenix dropped dead. And we went in, we stopped in this car park. Oh, this is the car park where Biggie Smalls was shot. And I'm going, what? Really? <laughs> they love all that. Oh, it could have been the Peterson. It could have been the Peterson Museum. I think, I, mean, that's, that's, I think that's what it is. I think that's what you're right. I think that's where it is. Because most, all surviving EV1s are now either in new museums or universities. Right, right. Yeah, there's not many of them. Uh, yeah. No. Anyway... And we have digressed. We have digressed because I just think it's important that we cover things that aren't cars because we do a lot of cars. Obviously, there's a lot of cars. But I just I was fascinated by this Cummins diesel, you know, Cummins, big, oh, all the big diesel yeah. trucks in the States, those massive big rigs. They're always they're very often Cummins diesels ones, but they've just made a 100 percent electric big rig semi truck. Semi, exactly. A a semi, semi truck. Yeah. And it's what I love to when I'm looking at the pictures of it, and we'll probably put a picture up now yeah, yeah. Um, for viewers. Uh, it has a bonnet. It's a proper American truck with a real Very bonnet, like unlike our sort of flat, flat fronted, fronted Euro ones, yeah. trucks. Yeah, no, it's a proper. Well, it's because Tesla are about to launch a, a semi truck of their own. That's it's right. Quite interesting that they, they I mean, because, you know, you could easily be a big truck maker and go, that's never going to work. We look at batteries. That's not going to work. We're not going to bother. Yeah. But suddenly that's really changed. So one of the biggest truck manufacturers in America goes, wait a minute, guys, quick, do an electric one. You know? Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. true. I mean, yeah, it, um, Cummins have been building um, uh, diesel engines for decades yeah. and decades. Yeah. And they've built what they call a fully electric class seven demonstration urban hauler tractor. <laughs> that's what I it's, want. I'm going to go uh, shopping in one. So, in American um, payload, this is a, an 18,000 pound truck in weight. Right. With a maximum payload capacity of 44,000 pounds. Wow. With a range of 100 miles on a single charge, enabled by a surprisingly small, their words, not mine, 140 kilowatt hour battery pack. Right. So, 100 miles is not very far. And that was my first thought. Yeah. But what they've said is mm. this is uh, pr primarily going to be used for urban freight routes. Yeah. Well, it's like deliveries to supermarkets. So if you think of your average, yeah. even American city, you've got a, a, you'll have a distribution centre by a big city and they'll yeah. go around all the five supermarkets. That probably isn't more than 70 or 80 miles in actual road miles. Yeah. You know, so and, let's uh, say L.A. Yeah. It would be it would be um, within the inner. Yeah. Within the inner part of, part LA, of the, L.A. Yeah. Um, where. Yeah. Or, or New York or London or yeah. wherever within the M25. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, it's great news because the um, the Tesla version that is forthcoming is apparently going to have two to three hundred mile range. Right. This is bound. To, this is only a one-off concept made by. Yes, uh, they haven't now. actually started producing them. That is very true. Yeah. Yeah, but very cool, very cool looking thing, yeah. and it means that not one but two trucks. Yeah. Uh, full size electric trucks well, are imminent. And there's also uh, the, the Nikola One, which is a a, a battery hybrid hydrogen fuel cell big rig that can do a thousand miles on one one load of hydrogen and a charge but and that has a 400 kilowatt hour battery and it's been unveiled as an actual thing rather than a design but i don't think i have not heard any there was a lot of news about that a while ago i've not heard any more recently but that was a, a long haul electric hydrogen electric truck which makes you know i've always argued hydrogen fuel cells really make sense when they're big and the thing they're yeah. like a ship like a digger, like a truck, yeah. like a train, you know, then you go and get that yeah. makes sense. Squash it all down and make it light enough for a car is really 
I think it'll happen, but it's going to totally. take a long time. Yeah. Well, it, where weight is of no concern, and yeah. packaging is just a much, much yeah, it's all less much important bigger. Yeah. aspect. Yeah. But the other one I think I love, which is also we've got to go and see them because it's in, it's in between you and me, Banbury. There is the uh, the yeah. arrival. I think that's how you say it. Arrival uh, electric truck company that have made the lovely little cute post office van. Oh yeah, yeah. Postman no, Pat. I mean, it's like Postman Pat. It's going to rock in that, you know, when he zips yeah, up to it, your house. Yeah, it does look extremely pat. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but this is this couldn't come soon enough because yeah. I, uh, my uh, my particular postman, he drives uh, used to drive a Corsa van. Now he's got a Fiat petrol van. He went right. from diesel. Oh, he's got to, to petrol. Uh, we're still on diesel around here. Oh, because him. apparently his his DPF kept blocking up. He told me. What you've got to tell because me what DPF all, is. Because all the short journeys, you see, ah. Diesel doesn't like it. Ah, isn't that classic, isn't it? Yeah, you never hear so, that. But from so the... now he's got an ele- he's now he's got a little uh, turbo petrol right. motor. Um, but I'm like, on a on a journey where he is literally driving the car four meters, stopping, yeah. leaving the door open with the radio on. He's a lovely guy. Yeah. Um, why is it not electric? Yeah, it, it makes it, so it much well sense for those. Yeah. For those that local delivery van, yeah, particularly particularly in rural areas, because that many people go, well, they're no good in rural areas. Look, I've I've talked to our post lady. She does, uh, she she reckons her route's about sixty eight miles, and it's one of the longest for that yeah. like, for the for the Cheltenham region because it's a rural area. So she does like four or five miles between a village, and then all the yep. dip 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 dip. And so six, yeah, I mean, sixty miles is nothing easily manageable in an, in an electric van. Totally, and think yeah. of all the regen braking because she's got to stop every ten meters. Got to stop every ten meters and go downhill when she leaves yeah. us. When she goes back to the depot, it's all downhill. <laughs> well, there you go. I think in this instance, and the same as the in the same way of that that the semi truck um, story yeah. is. Let's start doing short journey stuff. Let's yeah, with those big short, things. Yeah, short journey absolutely. Infrastructure first. Once we've conquered the short journey infrastructure. Let's worry about the long journey stuff like, um, you know, trucks going across continents and stuff like that. Um, Because someone mentioned the other day um, that 15 cargo ships um, put out the same amount of emissions as all of the world's diesel cars. Yes. It's those. But those figures, you have to I think you have to put a a slight filter. (laughs) You just, I mean, I just never sure, but I mean, it's very I mean, possible. It is quite scary. No, I, think of I mean, the one, yeah, I mean, in one of my other telly jobs, I, did, I went out, out of Bristol docks, <coughs> excuse me, Bristol, <coughs> Bristol docks. Are you I can't your, get that there. You put your dock worker voice. Yeah, in. Bristol docks. No, I went out on a massive container ship, and we, and that was so frustrating. It was going to Buenos Aires, that's where it was off to from Bristol. And, wow. and, and I had to get off. I wasn't allowed to go the whole way to Buenos Aires. We had to get off, you know, when it got out in the Bristol Channel. So I only experienced the beginning of this. This is vast, vast container ship, really huge. And I yeah. asked the captain how many gallons it uses to get going. And he was a, a, a Filipino guy, really lovely guy. And he said, no, 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 we don't measure it in gallons. We measure it in tons. And tons. I think it was 35 tons of fuel to get it moving. Oh, my goodness. It's just off the scale. But, I mean, it, when you see how big it is, you kind of make sense. It, it was really, it was, in, it was about half a mile long, this ship. It was truly well, colossal. Well, th- this is when you've got to, we've got to work out what you, what you, you've got to pick your battles, as my wife yeah. always says. Because, yeah. you know, you could argue that diesel cars are bad and, yeah, you know, emissions, they are bad. But if you're one of these people that cycles everywhere or has an electric car but wants yeah. to buy loads of cheap Chinese stuff via Amazon. Where does it come from? It where does it all come from? comes in a big container on a big ship. So, yes, yeah, so you're being great here, but you're being bad over here. Yeah. I just basically, um, I feel guilty 24 hours a day, regardless of what I do. If I, if I stood naked in mud, I'd feel guilty. <laughs> without you eating anything. A, you used to live in a hippie commune. I've lived in hippie communes, yeah. Yeah, but then we were we were adding a lot of a lot of methane because we were eating a, a diet basically of beans, <laughs> and cabbage, and cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. mean, all these arguments they are they are hugely yeah. perpetual, and you've got to kind of see the the long the long thing. You know, yes, we we know that diesel is bad, but loads of people have got diesels, and what do you do? Yeah. It's not their fault. Yeah. They were encouraged to buy them, blah blah, all those things. But eventually, yeah. what we need is. Well, eventually, when that diesel does die, you're not going to replace it with another diesel. That's the argument. You're going to replace it with an electric or a hybrid, you know, so, which is better. 
Yeah, know. totally. So, totally. You know, it's that, that long view is the thing. I really want to get to that the last story that you came up, which is because I didn't know anything about, I never understood scrappage. I know about scrap heaps. I've spent some time on them, but scrap is different. Say, I was going to say, surely you, you know about <laughs> I should that. should know, yeah. Scrappage is massive right now. Yeah. Um, in the last fortnight, loads of car manufacturers have, have, have added their name to this list of, of, of a new scrappage scheme. Right. And, it, and it's predominantly been triggered by the whole diesel revolt. Yeah. Vauxhall, I think, started the, the charge back in May. Yeah. Um, Ford made a big noise about it about two or three weeks ago. <clears throat> And like in the last 10 days, we've had everybody going, wading in. Initially, there was a few people saying, oh, you know, this is um, a terrible idea because I've noticed that certain cars are exempt from uh, the, the, the scrappage scheme incentive. Right. It does make sense for certain cars to maybe be, be chopped in that are neither collectible nor interesting yeah. um, and possibly heavier polluting cars. Um, I believe I had a look on Renault's website this morning. I'm pretty sure that you can buy a Zoe um, part of the scrappage scheme. So you could take in your Renault diesel car and get some money off a of Zoe. I mean, that, that, yeah, that's, that's the exactly. Right. Oh, now, that's Vauxhall obviously led the charge early on, but Vauxhall don't do um, many. Well, the um, Ampera was about it, really, wasn't it? That was all they Yeah, and like if they were selling the blimmin. If they were selling the new, uh, yeah, um, or, a, or, a, or the Bolt, if there was a Vauxhall Bolt equivalent of the, the if there was a Chevy Vox Bolt, Bolt yeah. it would be brilliant. Vox Bolt now is a good name. Be... It's a good name, Vox Bolt. To explain though, to pick, so people overseas might not know what scrappage is. So what the idea is that you're, it's basically an incentive to get you to change to a cleaner vehicle. It's not necessarily to electric, yeah. but so you take in your existing car that you own. And they yeah. give you what they give you more than you might expect to get it for it selling second hand. I don't quite know how it works. You yeah, get that money yeah, off I mean, then. You can get at least two thousand quid for it. Some right. people are saying, depending on which model car you want right. um, to buy new, you can get up to ten grand off. Right. Um, so it, it, it's not totally set, but I, I think it's two grand is your kind of entry level. Right. Um, you'll definitely guarantee this. You have to have owned the car for at least six months, the one that you're going to throw right. away. Um, and it's the same as what happened um, in the start of the recession. Yeah. Yes, they did it, do that before, introduced... didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, and, and it was introduced in the recession in, would have been 2009, yeah. to 2009 and um, it worked really well. Right. Uh, although, I do know for a fact that all of the cars that were chopped in um, for scrappage still have never been scrapped, Robert. What? So they're still on the road then, or they've been They resold? are sitting derelict on a, um, a, a, on a runway, a cordoned off um, wow. part of waste ground, an old runway. Wow. Still, but there, must now, be, there must be thousands of them. I mean, must be. There are thousands of them, and wow. some of them are beautiful classics. And I, I've seen some um, spy pictures, Urban X pictures, that I can't disclose who took them or how they came to me. Understood. But they exist. Wow. Um, yeah. There's loads of other stories we could do, but we've got to move Don't on. Want to drink a water? Yeah, I need a little bit of. I, thank you. It's all right. I've got my own coffee in a mm. mug. I think you've got a, haven't you got a mug of tea there, Johnny? Uh, drinking a cup of coffee. I was just having a cup of tea here. Well, it's funny you should talk about that because I've just made myself a fresh cup of well, tea. Well, there you go. And unfortunately, what I'm doing now is genuine drinking, but it's genuinely drinking really cold coffee. <laughs> anyway, yeah. that's all we've got time for. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for watching and trying to listen to my voice, which is not in the best state. It'll be better. It'll be better soon. We've got a lot of news uh, coming up, lots of exciting uh, new shows coming. So please do subscribe to Fully Charged. And before I go, though, I just want to do, I'm just doing a quick Patreon call out, Johnny. Yes. So these are. Do you, want um, some, do you want some help with that? Oh, or are you... Have you, yeah. Well, okay, we could do one, one. Yeah, you've got the list there. I'm just worrying about your voice, Robert. Yeah, I can do. I've got enough voice left to do these. But no, yeah. You do them, Johnny. You do them. Have you got the list? D David. Yes. It starts uh, with David. Okay, so um, just a really big thanks to everyone that subscribes uh, and uh, and um, and is uh, a paid up Patreon member. But big thanks to this this week, David Birkinshaw, uh, Sean Hart, Sean without an H. Yeah. Um, Morris Van Ettinger. Yep. Good. Uh, Nick Baker. And Jonathan Miller, Miller with an A. Miller with an A. Thank you very much, Thank you. guys. Great name, Jonathan. Yeah, very good. Jonathan Miller. And uh, that's what we've got time for. So thank you very much, Johnny, for joining us via Skype or actually FaceTime. Let's, not, let's be accurate. We're not yes, using Skype. This is FaceTime. This is FaceTime, um, not Skype. But other, 
other Social communication systems are available. available. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, please do subscribe to Fully Charged and uh, have a look at the Patreon link beneath this video. And as always, and this is going to be easy today, if you have been, thank you.